Hello there, let's work a mixing problem using differential equations. Just a bit of a heads up, these problems are a little bit tricky to get started on, but I hope you'll agree that once you get started, uh, they're not too bad once you start just get the ball rolling initially. So here's our specific problem statement. A tank initially contains 10 kilograms of salt in 100 liters of water. The contents of the tank flow out at a rate of 10 liters per minute. Salt water with a concentration of 0 0.01 kilogram per liter flows into the tank at a rate of 10 liters per minute. How much salt is in the tank after 11 minutes? So that's our problem statement. And it, this does get a little tricky to get it going. Um, but first thing we'll want to do is just kind of try and get a big picture idea of what's going on. So step one here will be consider the big picture. So if we draw it out, that could be helpful. So we imagine we just got this tank and we're going to fill it up with some water. In this case, we've got a volume of 100 liters, as shown up here. And the question here asks how much salt is in the tank. So it's going to be helpful to define salt, and we'll call that S. So S of T will be the salt inside this tank over here at time T, or salt in tank at time T. And as the problem states, there's going to be salt water flowing into the tank at a rate of 10 liters per minute, and the contents of the tank will flow out at a rate of 10 liters per minute. So the flowing in part will denote here, and the flowing out part will denote down here. Now we can look at our initial condition here shown in blue. A tank initially contains 10 kilograms of salt, and we could kind of write that down more mathematically, and we'll call that our S of zero, where we, that initial time is going to be the T equals zero time. So initially we've got 10 kilograms of salt, within this tank. And I think it's also worth noting at this point, this volume of 100 liters, it's going to stay the same because we have a flow rate going out of 10 liters per minute and a flow rate going in of 10 liters per minute. So the total volume in here is going to, is going to stay the same. And now aside from looking at our initial condition, we can kind of look at the end game condition. When we wait a really long time, when we keep pouring this salt of 0 0.01 kilograms per liter into this tank, um, we can expect that eventually this is going to become the concentration in the tank if we keep pouring this um, this concentration in. So we could kind of box this problem in, call that S of 999, just to, where 999 just represents a, a long amount of time that has passed by. And that's going to be approximately the concentration that we're pouring in times the total volume that we have. So if you multiply these together, you get one kilogram. So essentially what we can deduce from this is just to kind of box in our problem and say that we have an axis here and this is going to be our salt in the tank. And we got this axis here, it's going to be our time. We know that at t equals zero we're going to start off at 10 kilograms up here. But we know eventually we're going to get down to one kilogram. So we should have a plot that kind of looks like this where our concentration is going to be decreasing and sort of asymptotically level out at one kilogram. So what we see here is we have a change of salt with respect to time. We can call that DSDT, or the change of salt in tank with respect to time. And you can see that's going to be negative here because we're going to start off at 10. We're going to slowly decrease and get closer and closer to one kilogram as we keep pouring um, the salt water in. So now that we've sort of considered our big picture and kind of framed out what we expect to see in this problem, next thing we want to do is go ahead and find the differential equation that's going to kind of govern our work here. So DSDT is sort of the foundation of that differential equation. This is the derivative, and now we've got to find what this is on the right here, the change of salt and tank with respect to time. And this is probably the trickiest part of the problem. Um, but once you get this, it, it all kind of falls into place. So what we can do is we can define that um, DSDT, that change of salt in the tank with respect to time, as our rate of salt coming in minus our rate of salt coming out. So let's say that one more time. The change of salt in the tank is going to be equal to that salt coming in minus the salt going out. So with this as sort of our governing principle, we can find this differential equation. So we can make these rates in terms of differentials. So we can say that this um, rate of salt in, we could say that's our dsn dt 
and our rate of salt out, we'll call that RDS out DT, where we kind of could draw those in up here. So this rate coming in, rate of salt is going to be DS in DT. That rate of salt going out is going to be DS out in DT. Now we can first look at our rate of salt in coming in here. And that's going to be based on what's shown here in the green text. Salt water with a concentration of 0 0.01 kilograms per liter flows into the tank at a rate of 10 liters per minute. So we know our DSN DT, or that rate of salt coming in, is just going to be the concentration of salt water that's coming in times the flow rate that's coming in. So we multiply 0 0.01 kilograms per liter times 10 liters per minute, and these liters will cancel out and we just end up with 0.1 kilograms per minute of salt that's steadily coming in through the top. So now we have our rate of salt coming in portion here in kilograms per minute. And next thing we want to do is find that the rate of the salt going out. And it turns out this part's a little bit trickier, but it's going to be based on this shown in the red here. The contents of the tank flow out at a rate of 10 liters per minute. So you notice we're not actually given a concentration this time, we're just given that same flow rate. And that's where this becomes a little bit tricky. And this is tricky because the amount of salt in the tank is actually changing. Which of course is why we need a differential equation to solve this problem. Because we have this rate, ds dt, which is based on ds out dt, but ds out dt is based on s, or the, the concentration of salt in our water here. You have an equation that kind of self-references back to itself, and that's what kind of makes this more difficult, that's why we need differential equations, that's why we need calculus to solve this problem. But if we write it out, it's actually not too bad. But just imagine that the salt is going to be equally mixed in this water. So we can actually find the rate of salt leaving as our flow rate of water coming out times the salt concentration that's inside of that water that's flowing out. So our ds out dt is going to be our rate of water coming out, which we're given, multiplied by the salt concentration of that water that's coming out. We're not actually given that salt concentration, but it's changing, and that's what, that's what our S of T is. It's the salt in the tank at time T, and our concentration will just be this divided by the total amount of water in the tank. So putting some numbers to this, our rate of water out is going to be 10 liters per minute, which was given up here, and our salt concentration in the tank is going to be the amount of salt we have in the tank, S, divided by that volume of water in the tank, so S over 100 liters. And if we multiply these together, these um, liters will cancel out, and we'll again get the same units of kilograms per minute, which is good, because that's the units we had over for our rate in. And with this, we have finally arrived at our differential equation. And this, um, I would definitely say this is sort of the hardest part of the problem, is putting this all together. But now that we've got it, let's bring that up to the top here. And now that we've found our differential equation, we can focus on our next step which is going to be to find the general solution to this differential equation. And thankfully, our differential equation lends itself easy to the method of separable equations. So what we can do here to start off is go ahead and multiply each side by dt. And we can divide each side by this quantity, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1s. And doing that, we end up with ds over 0.1 minus 0.1s on the left, and we have dt on the right. So what we've done here is we moved all of our s variables on the left, and we moved our, all of our t variables on the right. And before we integrate this, it'll actually it's going to help us in the long run if we just go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 0.1. And if we do that, we end up with ds over s minus 1 equals negative 0.1 dt. And the reason we did this is to make it easier when we integrate. Because when we integrate, technically, this is not a basic antiderivative. We've got to use the u substitution. But when you use u substitution, it gets really simple, and you don't really have anything that carries over. Since this s doesn't have a coefficient, it doesn't have a negative sign, it makes it really easy. So integrating both sides, we end up with the natural log of absolute value of s minus 1 on the left, and negative 0.1t plus c on the right, where that c compensates for both of the constants that are going to be on the left and the right. Now, we're trying to isolate for S, because we're trying to find the solution for the salt in the tank. So what we can do to isolate S is take both of these sides, or take or rather take e to the power of both sides, 
In doing that, we cancel out that natural log on the left here, and we're left with this exponential on the right. And at this point, it becomes helpful to make a bit of an assumption here, and we're going to make the assumption that s is greater than 1. And this is a valid assumption, if you recall, because when we plotted this out earlier, we expected s to vary, start at 10 kilograms and decrease down to 1 kilogram. And if we Im imagine that, then that absolute value sign doesn't really do anything if this quantity in here is going to be greater than 0. So given this assumption, we'll go ahead and get rid of that absolute value. And next thing we can do is change this on the right side here to e to the c times e to the negative 0.1t. And we can make the substitution and say that e to the c is just equal to a different arbitrary constant, which we'll call d. So making that substitution, we end up with this equation. And finally, all we got to do is add a 1 to both sides. And adding 1, we just end up with our general solution. So this is our step 3. We have completed it now. But this is still a bit too general for us to actually solve this question here. So we've got to take into account our initial condition. And our initial condition was stated up here in blue. A tank initially contains 10 kilogram of salt in 100 liters of water. So with this initial condition, we can move on to step four and find the particular solution. And our initial condition up here basically states as we said earlier, that s of 0 is equal to 10. Now we can set, we can take this 0 here for our t value, plug it in in our equation down here, and doing that, we now have one equation and one unknown, which is the d, and we can isolate for d and solve for it. So of course this e to the 0 here is just going to go to 1. So we can subtract 1 from both sides and we end up with d equals 10 minus 1, or 9. So taking that 9, we can go ahead and plug that back in for d. And we have arrived at our solution, s equals 9e to the negative 0.1t plus 1. All right, now that we've got that, all we need to do is answer our question here. How much salt is in the tank after 11 minutes? So this is going to be step 5, solve. So all we do is take that 11 minutes, plug it into our equation here for t, and we end up with s of 11 is equal to 9e to the negative 1.1 plus 1, and solving that we get that's approximately equal to 4 kilograms. So that's our final answer to the question. But before we conclude, let's take a look at what we've done from a graphical perspective. So what you can see here is a graph where this y-axis is going to be s, our salt in the tank, and our x-axis here is going to be t, or um, time. And if we use our differential equation, we can plot out a slope field. And that slope field is going to look like this. Um, next we can plot out our particular solution, which is shown here in blue. And you can see that it's starting off here at when t equals 0, we're starting off at 10. And for our particular case, we wanted to calculate it at t equals 11. Shown here, we're getting something at close to close to four, so that matches up. So graphically, this l tends to make sense according to what we had expected to see. You can also see that if we wanted to go ahead and adjust our initial salt content in the tank, that this curve's kind of going to go up and down, always following those slope field lines. A particular entrance is if we bring it down here to, to say initial start condition where we had just pure water in the tank. In this case, the salt concentration is actually going to increase until it gets um, to one kilogram. But you can see here um, when s equals one, this would be our equilibrium solution, and our concentration in the tank would just flatline. So this all seems to make sense graphically, um, but this will conclude our mixing problem example, and I hope it was helpful.